Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a very exciting video because today I'm going to be sharing with you all my all-time favorite book series. So I've been wanting to make this video ever since I started my channel, but I just kept putting it off because I always felt like I would read some other series and then that would be on my list of favorites as well, and then the list would never be complete. But I decided to just put all of that aside because obviously I will read more series in my life and some of those are bound to make it on my list of favorites, so this list will forever be changing. But at this point in my life, I feel like I have compiled a good list of books that I would consider to be my all-time favorite series, and I wanted to be able to share all of those with you. So all of the series on this list are fully completed. I didn't want to include any series that I've only read the first book of, or the other books haven't come out yet, because I don't know if I will like the complete series. But there are also two series on this list that I haven't personally fully completed, even though they are already complete. I just haven't read the last book in the series, but I've started both of them, so I already know that I'm going to like them, and I consider them to be my favorites already, so they're definitely making it onto the list. I have a total of 10 series on this list and it's composed of adult, young adult, graphic novels, middle grade. These are really in no particular order even though I'm counting them down from 10 to 1. Number one on my list is the only one that is kind of set. The other ones are kind of interchangeable. It depends on my mood. It depends on how recently I reread the series. But without any further ado, let's get into talking about my all-time favorite series. So coming in at number 10 on my list is a series that I read many many years ago and it's one of the series that made me fall in love with reading and that is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. Like I said, I read these when I was a lot younger. I think I was 12 or 11 years old when I first read them, and I absolutely fell in love with this series. I'd always been a huge fan of Greek mythology, so getting to read a series that encompassed all of that and delved into it and made it its own was so much fun for me when I was younger, and I still really, really enjoy these books. You'll notice this throughout the rest of this video, but I really love character-driven books, so if there are really compelling characters in a series or a book in general, I will tend to fall in love with that more so than if the book is more plot driven. And while I think this one isn't necessarily just character driven, the plot is very action packed and that's one of the reasons I also really enjoyed it. It's the characters that really made this series for me. Percy is so sassy and hilarious. I just absolutely loved him as a kid. Annabeth was someone that I admired and looked up to and was just like a great role model for me when I was reading these and I was like in middle school and things were just like terrible because middle school is terrible. <laughs> I have so many good memories and nostalgic feelings attached to this series and I remember that my mom actually read the first book with me because I had to read it for a school project and do like a book report and we were supposed to read it with one of our parents and um, I chose to read The Lightning Thief so she read it with me. So I also have that memory attached to it and it made it a lot more fun and a lot more memorable for me. But these are just so much fun and I will forever cherish the adventures that I got to go on with Percy as a kid. Number nine on my list is another series that I read when I was in middle school and it's a series that I would consider to be a classic and that is The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. As I think it was for many people, The Hunger Games was my first time ever delving into the world of dystopian and it changed my life. <laughs> I've talked about this many times before, but I've always said that it was the Twilight series that really, really got me into reading. But I would have to give credit to the Hunger Games trilogy for getting me into binge reading because it was this series that got me to pick up like every other dystopian series that had come out around the same time. I read Divergent because of this series, I read Delirium because of this series, I read Matched, I picked up The Mortal Instruments even though that wasn't dystopian, but I just picked up so many things because I read these so quickly and I was obsessed with them. But aside from that, I think this series just has a lot of merit to it. You can read it when you're a lot younger and I think you'll appreciate it for different reasons. I remember loving this series in middle school for the love triangle and the romance and all of that and for some of the dystopian aspects to it. But now when I look at this series, I am just in awe of the politics of it all, of the world that Suzanne Collins crafted, of the commentary this series makes. While dystopian obviously existed before The Hunger Games, I definitely think it was this series that introduced it into the YA category. There's just so much to this series and I definitely think it's the type of series that every time you reread it you'll notice something different and talking about it now is kind of just making me want to reread it just because I haven't read them in so long and I'm just very happy for its existence and how much it has contributed to the literary world. So the next series on my list is a long one and a heavy one and that is the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. I don't even know if these all fit in the frame. These are seriously really heavy so I'm not gonna hold all of them up. I'm just gonna hold up City of Bones. So yes, the Mortal Instruments series. This is it's probably the most nostalgic series on my list because honestly, 
These books are not my favorite books in the entire world. I just really, really love them because of the time that I read them and how much they meant to me then and how much they helped me through. So I started reading this series back when I was in middle school. I think I was in seventh grade when I read City of Bones and City of Ashes and City of Glass were already out and Clockwork Angel had just recently come out when I started reading these books. And then Cassandra Clare announced that she was going to be continuing on with this series and I was so excited. I found out that she was coming to a book signing near where I lived. So I went with one of my friends to my very first book signing. I met her and Holly Black and she signed all of my books and it was just such a fun experience. This was the series that got me into fandom. I made a Tumblr blog with some of my other friends just based around the series. I became friends with people because they had also read this series and it was just a very good time for me. I was just delving into the whole book world. I had genuinely memorized entire scenes and chapters from this book. I had an entire playlist dedicated to Clary and Jace. I had fallen head over heels for Jace. He was like the love of my life in middle school. Um, nowadays I honestly don't think I like him at all anymore, but back then he was like the one I was going to marry and nobody else compared. I was just so obsessed with this series. I fell utterly in love with it and it's because of those ties that I really just can't let go of it and why I like it so much. I also just love the Shadowhunter world in general. I think it's so complex and intricate and I like the politics of it all and I like the mythology and history behind it and getting to see the different cities and even though now I'm not as obsessed as I used to be I really really enjoy going back into the world and it's why I continue to read the other Shadowhunter books that come out because like I said I'm just really fond of the world and I just have so many great memories attached to this so I totally understand whenever people have criticisms of this series but for me I just really enjoy them and I think I forever will. Number seven on my list is one of the two series that I've yet to complete but I am more than halfway through the last book and really really enjoying it so far so I consider it a favorite and it is also the most recent series that I've read and that is the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. So many people recommended this series to me that I finally caved and picked it up and I am so happy I am in love with these books. They are so incredible. Before starting these books, I had no idea what this series was about. And I am honestly so happy because of that because I had no expectations for this series and it blew me away. So I'm not really gonna tell you what these are about. I'm just gonna read you the very first page of this. It's not even the full page. It's before the first chapter even starts. And it says, once upon a time, an angel and a devil fell in love. It did not end well. And that's really all you need to know before going into this series. That pretty much covers what it is about but it's so much more and it is incredible. These books are beautifully written and full of so much magic and intrigue and politics and war and action and romance and everything you could honestly ask for. And it's so much fun. Like I said, I've yet to finish the third one. I'm more than halfway through, but I read the first two books in a matter of two days and I read them each in like one to two sittings because they're that addictive. I just can't get enough of the world and the characters and the writing, which is absolutely exquisite. And while they still have some cliche tropes and things, I definitely think when it comes to the plot and the originality of these, they're unlike any other YA series I've ever read or just any other series I've ever read and I love them for that. Number six on my list of all-time favorites is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I only have The Raven Boys and The Raven King. I don't own the other two so just the first and last one but I have read them all and I love every single one of them. But The Raven Cycle is about these four Southern prep school boys and this girl named Blue who all go on these adventures looking for a dead Welsh king. And much like Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I think it's better to go into these without knowing too much and without expecting too much. But personally for me, the reason that this is on my list of favorites is 100% because of the characters. The characters in this series pretty much define squad. Like, I love all of them so, so much. I genuinely want to be best friends with them and be a part of their group more than anything in the world because they're all so precious to me and I love each of them with all of my heart. Maggie Stiefvater just does an excellent job of making you fall in love with this friend group and making you feel like you're genuinely a part of their friend group. And getting to see how much these characters care about one another is so meaningful to me because one of my favorite things in books are like strong friendships and that is what this series is full of and it means 
means the world to me. <laughs> Apart from the characters though, the writing in this series is also beautiful. It's really whimsical and dreamlike and kind of confusing at times, but in a very good way and in a purposeful way for the story. And similar to Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I think this series is also extremely unique in its plot and in its characters and just in the way that it's written as well. It's definitely the type of series I could read and reread over and over again, and I definitely plan to do that in the coming years. I don't really know how to explain it, but reading these makes me feel really cozy and sentimental, and I love getting that feeling from books. So getting to experience that combined with my love for the characters definitely makes this one of my all-time favorites. The next series on my list is the last one that I've yet to complete, and I am almost done with the third book, but that is The Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. But this is an adult high fantasy series that takes place in a world where people have magical abilities, or some people do, and those magical abilities manifest through metals. So some people can consume one metal and then they can use their power in one specific way. Whereas some other people can consume multiple types of metals and use their powers in multiple different ways. And they're called Mistborns and they are very rare. And within this world, there is a war going on. There are plots to overthrow a ruler who is oppressive and there's a lot of politics and it's really complex, but it is such a great, great series because of that. If you couldn't tell by some of my other favorites, I'm really into political intrigue in fantasy and things like that. And that I think is the most captivating part of this series for me overall. This is genuinely the most complex and well-developed world I have ever read about in any fantasy book. I don't understand Brandon Sanderson's mind and how he was able to create all of this. Apart from that as well, you have excellent characters, a great main female protagonist who doesn't annoy me, which is very rare for me to find nowadays. And there's also some romance in here, which I really enjoy, and some great friendships. And I, I just love everything about this series. This is definitely the type of series that you can get completely immersed in and forget the real world entirely because the world in here itself is so realistic. So clearly I absolutely love this series and I am so excited to finish it off as well as pick up some more of Brandon Sanderson's books because I have a feeling his other series will probably end up on my list of favorites as well. So the next series on my list is the only graphic novel series that I have and that is the Saga Comics by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. Now if you've been on my channel with me for a while, you know of my love of the saga comics. I am obsessed with these comics and they mean everything to me. I will however put a warning on that because these are very mature. They're adult comics and some of the images are graphic and sexual and vulgar in some ways. So if you're not comfortable reading that or if you are very very young and don't think you're ready to read that, then I definitely probably wouldn't recommend these to you just yet. But if you have no problem with any of that, I cannot recommend this series enough. If you're looking for fantasy, this has it. If you're looking for sci-fi, this has it. If you're looking for a good romance, definitely has it. Diversity, representation of sexuality, race, anything you're looking for, this comic series has it all. These genuinely have some of the most realistic, flawed, complex characters I've ever read about mixed into one of the most interesting plots and compelling plots that I've ever read about. The main plot that these comics follow revolves around the story of these two individuals from two different planets who fall in love with one another, but these planets are at war with each other. And the whole story is told from the perspective of their child. And that synopsis just captivated me in the first place and is what got me to read these. But it is so much more than that and I can't even explain it because you really have to experience it for yourself. I think I've said this as well before in a different video, but the way that I would describe these comics is like an adult version of Avatar The Last Airbender. So if you've watched that show and you know how much I love that show, these comics are similar to that in the themes that they discuss and in the way that they approach a lot of those themes. I've yet to find a comic series or graphic novel that I enjoy more than these. So if any of you happen to have any comic recommendations, definitely let me know. If you've read Saga and you think that there's anything out there that's kind of similar that I might also enjoy, please let me know because I would love to read some more comics because these have just blown me away. So moving on into my top three favorite series. Number three on my list is a series that I read very recently and fell utterly in love with, and that is the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo. I don't know 
if a duology technically counts as a series, but I'm just gonna count it as a series because I can't make this video and not put these books on this list because they are so good and they mean so much to me. <laughs> the Six of Crows duology takes place in the Grishaverse, which is the same universe as the Grisha trilogy by Leigh Bardugo, and we follow around these six characters in the first book who are commissioned to go on this heist, and then in the second book we follow around the characters as they go on some other adventures and kind of have to deal with the after effects of that heist. But this series is the first YA series I have read in a very long time that has made me feel the way I felt about YA when I was reading it back in middle school. I became completely involved with all of the characters in this series. I fell in love with the story. I wanted to know what was going to happen. I'm so invested in all of them. And that was not something that I had felt reading a YA series in a very very, very long time, so it meant so much to me that this series did that. The other super meaningful thing about this series for me is how diverse it is. You have a cast of characters who all represent something different and are all so well written and so well executed, and it makes me so happy to know that that is all represented in a very popular YA series. These books also deal with really important themes like poverty and racism and slavery. I also have a very deep-rooted love for Inej's character in this series. She means so much to me and I can't even express how much reading about her character impacted me and how important she is to me and that is very much part of the reason that this series means so much to me and immediately after I read Crooked Kingdom this series made it to the top of my list because that's how much I love it. Alright so moving on to number two on my list and I'm guessing that many of you can guess this, considering my channel name, but that is The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. So yes, for the many people who have asked me, and since I don't know if I've actually ever addressed this in a video before, my channel name, A Clockwork Reader, is named after The Infernal Devices series because I love this series so, so much. I think these books are far more well-developed than the Mortal Instruments books are. The plot is a lot more interesting in my opinion and the characters are a lot more developed. This series also has the only love triangle that I have ever actually enjoyed as well because I love all three of the characters involved in the love triangle and it doesn't get annoying, it's just heartbreaking in the best way possible. Reading these books just brings me so much joy. I recently reread Clockwork Angel this year and I just remembered how much I actually love this series and I'm thinking of rereading the rest of the series as well because I haven't reread them in a really long time and I feel like I'm overdue for a reread. I am also completely and utterly in love with Will Herondale and even though it was 13 year old me that fell in love with him in the first place, uh, 19 year old me still loves him just as much I think and I don't think I'll ever stop. I know he's not like the greatest character in the world. I'm just so deeply attached and I can't get over it. <laughs> These books just make me so unbelievably happy because they elicit so many different emotions from me when I'm reading them. And it's just such an engaging reading experience. And that is just so rewarding for me. So I will forever love these. And the fact that I love them just as much as I used to when I was 13, I think is very telling of that. And finally, we are on to the very last one, my number one all time favorite series, which should come as no surprise to any of you because the suspense was building up to pretty much nothing. Cause honestly, like, let's be real. This is like every other person's favorite series. But that, of course, is the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I'm not going to hold up all seven books because they're all nicely arranged on my Harry Potter shelf and I don't want to take them all off. How does one explain their love for Harry Potter without crying? I do not know. So I actually started reading these books when I was a little bit older. I had seen like up until the sixth movie and the seventh movie had not come out yet. Part one wasn't out. So I had actually watched all the movies first. And I think I was in seventh grade. So I was 12 when I read the first book for the first time. And I fell in love. I was already a huge fan of the movies. I grew up watching them. They were a huge part of my childhood, but for some reason I never picked up the books. So when I was around 12 years old was when I first really got into reading and I decided that I should pick these up and read them since everyone else has read them and I love the movies. It was about time for me to pick them up as well. So once I started reading this, I obviously fell completely in love. I realized how much more there was to the books than there were to the movies and I flew through all seven of the books in seven days. I literally read one a day 
for an entire week and I didn't do anything else. And that was the moment when I knew that I loved reading beyond compare. I have yet to have a reading experience like reading the entire Harry Potter series because that experience was genuinely like an alternate reality. Like I was in this world and nothing else existed and it came down to the core of what I truly love about reading and the escape that it can provide and how much comfort it can give you and I can't compare it to anything else. Like I said, this story meant so much to me. The characters, especially Hermione, meant so much to me. I feel like I'm just rambling on and on because I genuinely don't even know what to say to explain how much I love these books because there's really nothing I can say. Reading Harry Potter, I think, is just an experience that's really personal to each person who has read and enjoyed this series. And I don't think any of us truly know how to describe how much these books mean to us because I think they mean something to each of us in very different ways. I personally read this series in a very difficult time in my life when I was not very happy and it brought me an immense amount of joy and I'm forever grateful to it for that. So yeah, it's not something I can ever truly describe, but it is something that I hold so dear to my heart and I don't think anything can ever replace. All right guys, so that is it for my list of all time favorite book series. Let me know in the comments down below if any of the books that I mentioned are also on your list of all time favorite series. And also let me know what some of your favorite series are if I didn't mention them on this list and I will be sure to check them out because I'm always looking for new series to read. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!